Police pinning, convocation continues, and first festivals. All this and more as the Stafford Weekly News starts now. Welcome to the Friday, August 16th edition of the Stafford Weekly News. I'm Randall Williams. The Stafford Police Department has grown again, and we attended the ceremony to welcome new detective Julia Trevino. Early Monday morning, folks gathered at Stafford PD for the pinning of a new member, Detective Julia Trevino. The experience that uh, you're going to bring to the department, uh, we know once you get back there and learn how we do our processes that you'll hit the ground running and won't miss a beat. So we're, we're really excited to have you. Um, and uh, I'm familiar with your family. Uh, like I told you when, when we first talked, I uh, knew your father. And uh, she's got a line of uh, law enforcement family members. So uh, it's great to have you here. And we're, we're looking forward to it. So. Hey, actually, I am one of three um, children. So my dad, uh, Swan Delgado, he passed away, unfortunately, from, but he's on the wall in, in Washington, D.C. So my, my father was law enforcement. My brother and sister, they're, um, they're twins, and they're actually law enforcement as well. So it was all three of us that went into it. So. Raise your right hand, repeat after me. I state your name. I, Julia Trevino. You solemnly swear or affirm. Do you solemnly swear or affirm? That I will faithfully execute. That I will faithfully execute. The duties of the office of. The duties of the office of. Peace officer. Peace officer. In and for the city of Stafford. In and for the city of Stafford. Counties of Fort Bend and Harris. Counties of Fort Bend and Harris. And of the state of Texas. And of the state of Texas. And will to the best of my abilities. And will to the best of my abilities. Preserve, protect, and defend. Preserve, protect, and defend. The Constitution. The Constitution. And the laws of the United States. And the laws of the United States. And of this state. And of this state. So, so help me guide. It's been a journey. So it started in, um, I came into law enforcement in 2001. I started in CID. I uh, went to the police academy. I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to do. So it's like once I kind of got into dispatch and then I kind of saw everything and I was like, this doesn't, at the time, it's like, this doesn't feel like work at all. And it was fun and you got to meet people and you got to do different things. And so I really liked that part about it. So I started in dispatch. I did, I want to say like three years in dispatch and then I went to patrol. I was able to do, you know, I was an FTO. I did all that stuff and then I went to CID and I worked special crimes in CID in Fort Bend County. Um, I took a bit of a break and uh, I decided that I, I wasn't done. And so I decided to come back and um, I looked at several agencies in the area. I, I knew I wanted to be close to home. I knew I wanted to be in Fort Bend County and, and continue my, my work here. And so that's how, you know, Stafford came on the radar and, and lucky I was able to meet some people and, and talk to a whole bunch of different people about it. And I've been welcomed in rather quickly and, and it's been, been great. For Stafford Weekly News, this is Randall Williams. The active shooter is the new modern nightmare and law enforcement receives special training to counter that threat. I want to thank Stafford Municipal School District for allowing us to host a alert air course. It's a two-day course. Uh, we did two back-to-back -back courses here at their facility. Uh, it was opened up to 17 departments around this area. We had about seven instructors. You come in. You, boom, 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 boom. Okay, what do I got? What do I need? Give your LCAN. Locate, subdue, or do what you have to do. Right? That's what it's supposed to do. Right? build upon everything we've done. As instructors, we're here to provide this training to public safety. We spend really a day and a half in the classroom for lecture and then we spend the rest of it in, in scenarios based on real life incidents that occur such as uh, the Las Vegas shooting, Orlando, uh, Pulse shooting, Virginia Tech. And so we try to make it as realistic with the sounds with, with uh, you know, what we call the blue guns that the officers carry. Uh, doing clearances, medical treatment. Going up the stairs. Keep your head. Oh. Right here, right here. 
It's alert air is active attack integrated response. The goal behind that is to integrate law enforcement with fire and EMS personnel. We also have room for dispatchers in our course. They have a separate course as well, but it's good for them to understand because they're on the background while everybody else is out here, you know, saving people. Ultimately, they're saving people too because they're the ones taking the calls, they're taking the notes, you know, from the stations. The first scenario is always gonna be a lot of hiccups in it. There's gonna be mistakes made, which is expected. And then as the days go on, you know, we see as instructors, the students, their vast improvement. You know, they're, they're clicking, they're communicating. Everything is, is evolving. Combined effort really pays off. What they learned is it wasn't just stopping the, the killing, it was stopping the dying. How do we train to keep people alive? So this kind of walks everybody through the next steps of how to get people out of the hot zone into the warm zone and off, eventually get them to a higher level of, of care at a trauma center. I want to thank the Meadows Place Police Department, Lakeview Police Department, Alvin PD, Galveston County, SO, Yoakum PD, U of H PD, Fort Bend ISD PD, Harris County Precinct 5, uh, Stafford Fire Marshal's Office, Missouri City Fire Marshal's Office, Richmond Fire Marshal's Office, Paraland Fire Marshal's Office, Albany EMS, Stafford Fire, Richmond Fire, Magnolia Fire Department, and then Community Fire. This course, as well as all the other alert courses, uh, I think they're they're very beneficial for all law enforcement, whether you're ISD, college, local, state, county, whatever. I think everybody needs this course. Everybody needs an alert course to go through and and get the basics down because once you once you get that communication set of what needs to be done, everything will go smoother. It's extremely vital. Um, this this program saves lives. Um, it integrates the responses of fire, police, EMS. Well, that was a party. Next. You can try, but you won't find another city like Stafford, Texas. Serving our community just like you like it taking care of you and your home since 1945. We believe in STEM to learn and STEM to earn. We're heading into college certified and career ready. As a former student of Stafford, I take pride in keeping our classrooms safe. We are Stafford, we are one. Enrovi Nathaniel continues his report on SMSD's fall convocation. As I start my 10th uh, year on the board, um, I've been doing a lot of reflecting, and this is probably be my last time that I speak to you as a board president, so this is kind of special to me today, um, and personal, so. I am honored to be the elementary level teacher of the year for 2024. I cannot truly accept my title without reflecting on my first three years in education. Today is August the 5th, 2024, and we had the pleasure of celebrating convocation, the opening and one of the most celebrated days of the school year for us. Today, we had a chance to see our teachers display their talent that they have. Our superintendent gave encouraging words. We spent a lot of time also talking about the future. Our theme this year is building a better future, one team, one mission. It's also a carry on from last year, and we felt that that thing was so important in terms of our, our theme, One Team, One Mission, we wanted to continue knowing that we still have to look at the skills for our students in the future. So we had our cheerleaders, they performed. We had a, a drone demonstration from one of our uh, teachers, or two of our teachers actually. And so today was a time to really get geared up, to really uh, celebrate what we're trying to do 
and trying to make sure that every child is college and career ready. We had one of our uh, vendors today, the Brazos Valley Credit Union, they came and they provided uh, certificates and monetary certificates for our Teachers of the Year, our uh, District of the Year, Elementary and Secondary, as well as our Rookies of the, of the Year. We also celebrated our teachers who participated in the Grow Your Own program. Some of the uh, individuals that participated in the program were paraprofessionals who are now certified teachers teaching in our classrooms. We also had high school teachers that went back to school and they worked on credentials for dual credit uh, at HCC. So uh, it was really a good time to show what our teachers are doing to be prepared, as well as taking the time to prepare other employees in our districts in our district to become uh, teachers. Um, thank you again for having me. Um, you know, we decided to really, really pursue uh, the Stafford School District because we believe in community over commodity. Um, and a lot of uh, state policy, a lot of national policy and local policy has really made an effort to commodify education. And so we don't see our children as children anymore, depending on where you're at, right? We see them as um, numbers, we see them as statistics, we see them as these things. So it's really important for us as parents to find ourselves in a community of educators, a community of high learning, where we are about community, while others are about commodity. Um, and so the theme today is to build a better future. There's a quote by Nelson Mandela, first uh, president of the New Republic of South Africa, right? And he says, I never lose. I either win or I learn, right? So losing ain't even in our vocabulary. Everything is a learning experience, but in order for our children to understand that, then we have to cultivate growth mindsets, right? We never lose. We either win or we learn, right? And in order to do that, we gotta still build community and teach our children how to build community. But again, going back to that Baldwin quote, children are gonna imitate what they see the adults doing. So if the staff in the school, if the teachers on the campus and in the district are building a strong community, then you'll see that reflected in the student culture. Teachers and staff aren't the only ones who get to party at the beginning of the school year. The public can get in on the action during SMSD's Party on the Plaza. Hi everyone, today is our annual party on the plaza. As you can see and hear, we have so many community members that are involved to give back to the district. We have so many parents, so many teachers, so many administrators. We are also giving away backpacks through supplies for every student in the district. We have some great vendors here. We have, like for example, Smart Financial, Waterburger, Infinity, the lovely ladies of AKA. We are having a blast today and the kids are excited. The teachers are excited. Today is just a great day to just let your hair down, enjoy your community and get ready for school the first day of school at Stafford. Today we are here at Stafford Municipal School District at our fourth annual Party on the Plaza. This is our annual community event where we get all of our community stakeholders, all of our teachers, all of our families here just for a good fun time celebrating back to school. We have support from all over Stafford. We have Whataburger, we have the Vineyard Church, we have Loving Houston um, who partners with our school district in so many ways to meet the needs of our families. We are just so excited to get this school year started. Back off to a great start. We're giving out school supplies. We have all of these community resources. 
Smart Financial is here giving out financial education. Uh, we want to do whatever we can to get resources in the hands of our parents. So excited for We Are One Party on the Plaza 2024. Today we are here in Stafford, Texas at Stafford Municipal School District with Party on the Plaza. We are excited today as a part of this program, UCAP Omega Chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated is here to provide backpacks and school supplies for the students today. We are very excited because this is a part of two of our initiatives, empowering our families and uplifting our local communities. And we are excited because we have a lot of vendors here. People are registering people to vote. They're excited to give coupons, backpacks, and other key materials for students today. Not only did we give backpacks today, we also provided a donation for the students of over $2,500 so they can also provide more school supplies for their students. And we're excited to be here today with them. Sean Pettit provides us with a preview of the upcoming SMSD football season. I think uh, we'll be young in some spots. We will um, we'll have an opportunity to be halfway decent. I think once those youngsters kind of grow up, but um, we've got a good opportunity. We have about 17, 18 seniors back, and a lot of those guys played the last two years. Once we get a couple games on our belt, I think we'll be pretty good. Traditionally, here we have a lot of speed. Uh, we, we've got um, two outside receivers that are really, really fast. We've got a DN that runs runs track. Also, he's like a 50, 51, 50 point quarter kid, and he's six foot two, 215 pounds. So, and he can roll. Jonathan Moore. Uh, Jonathan is actually picked as the uh, district MVP, defensive MVP, preseason MVP. Brian O'Neill. He's a corner. Our closest thing, to our lockdown corner that we have. And we've got a couple other kids that played. I have a couple of inside linebackers that are pretty good. Uh, Jeremiah Brazil and my man is, we call him Hat Man. His Hat, Hatnamaya Olivier. We've got a really good group defensively, I think. Uh, offensively, we bring him back quarterback that started the back half of the year. Uh, and out, a couple of inside slot receivers, an outside receiver that started there are two, the two slot receivers are really dynamic. We're bringing back about four or three or four of the offensive line from last year, three or four starters. So the group offensive line, and they're pretty close. Uh, they've been together since ninth grade. Dylan Williams, uh, Chris Brown, Avila, Jalen Kemp, and JT. Uh, Torres is his last name, but we just call him JT. The bell cow, I guess you call it, is, is Darius Sims. He started playing for us early. He's been a starter, I say, since 10th grade. He played a lot as a ninth grader. He's uh, kind of an inspirational leader, plays real hard, does a lot of things on the field for us, puts us in, in some really good situations. And then the two DNs are really good. That's what people kind of, we lay our hat on them, Osam and, and more. I want to say uh, Moore had right at eight or nine sacks last year. And Olsen was right behind him. I think he had six or seven. Darius Sims, Dylan Williams, Chris Brown, uh, Manuel Olsen, they're all guys that, you know, they've been in the program and they understand how we do things. And the, uh, it's, 
the tradition is kind of passed down. The culture is kind of passed down from one group to the next. So uh, this is their time to lead. So but once we get, you know, if we can stay healthy and we get everything together, I think we have a chance to be really good. LGBT Rific next. In Stafford, diversity is not just a number, it's who we are. When you are here, you become part of the story. You can sleep well knowing we're always on the job and looking out for you. It's a great place for growth and opportunity. Tradition starts here. We teach your children and we stick around for your grandchildren. We are one, we are Stafford. This is the city of Stafford, and we are work. We've spoken before about Fort Bend County's diversity, and it became no more obvious than with a festival held last weekend supporting yet another culture. It's Sunday afternoon at the Fort Bend County Fairgrounds and people are waiting patiently to get in. So what's going on? Ah! So we are hosting our very first Pride Festival in Fort Bend County. We couldn't be more happy or excited for this event. Um, it's been a long time coming, but we are just out here supporting the entire community. Neighbors are coming out, whether they're gay, lesbian, trans, straight, everyone's out in full force. When I say it was a long time coming, I've, gay people are everywhere, no matter where you, what letter you are on the LG, G, LGBTQIA+. Um, it's just a matter of visibility, right? So uh, you, you know a gay person, they're, they're all around, and especially these suburb, suburban and rural areas, um, you know, there's not much support out here, so it was, very, it was vital that we put together this organization and show our support. Our plans for the future, we, we want to keep hosting a festival every single year, but we also want to do programming. So we're looking to do um, after school activities. We, we've been um, doing uh, like detergent drives for victims of domestic violence. We've been doing toy drives for um, youth experiencing homelessness. We want to continue all of these programs um, just to show our support for everyone who's a part of the community, no matter where they are in their journey. FortBendCountyPride.org is where you can go for more information or give us a follow. Um, we're on Instagram, Facebook, all our social media channels. For Great American Pastimes, this is Randall Williams. That's a wrap on our news for this week. Thank you for joining us. For everyone here at Stafford Weekly News, I'm Randall Williams. May all your news be good news.
This program was produced on the Stafford campus of Houston Community College.